effectively. So here's some expenditure line item increases that we're seeing kind of universally through the department. Um, so the first item, two and a half percent COLA included for the regional budget. It's important to point this out because the city managers directed uh, citywide that we're not to budget for any COLAs. However, uh, given the fact that our regional partner agencies are so much smaller than us, um, we were sensitive to the fact that if the city came back with large COLAs mid-year, we're, we're having to ask pretty small agencies to come up with a lot of money all at once. So uh, the finance team uh, made a concession and allowed us to budget for a 2.5% COLA and regional just to soften the potential blow of any changes mid-year. Just continuing to see chemicals and electricity go up. Um, in fact, uh, I believe between fiscal year 22 and 23, we saw a 32% increase in the amount we paid for electricity and a 56% year-over-year increase on the price of chemicals. So we're still keeping an eye on that and increasing budget uh, for those items. Uh, we'll talk to you a little, about, a little bit about our water purchase budget later in the presentation. Insurance premiums. Um, we're seeing insurance premiums between increases of between 20 and 65% through the department. Uh, so it's pretty substantial increases. Um, we have some increases in outside services, which I'll touch on later in the presentation. And then we have four staffing changes, uh, three new positions, all replacing uh, vacant positions. And the water reuse engineer moved from asset management to regional uh, she's actually already out at the plant, but what we're doing is moving uh, her labor budgetarily for next year. So overall, when we look at our water, wastewater, regional and stormwater, O&M increases, o &M increases rather, uh, we have an overall increase 5.9% to the water fund, a decrease of 1.9% to the wastewater fund. 8.5% uh, increase in regional, and then an overall increase of about 20% in stormwater and creeks, uh, just under 19% funded by the general fund and 81% funded by enterprise funds. That 20% is actually a little misleading, and I'll touch on that later on in the presentation when we discuss stormwater and creeks own and budget. So we're proposing a total department-wide budget, including stormwater, of $84.2 million. As you can see, the, the water purchase piece of the budget takes up more and more of our budget each year. Um, and our capital program, I'm gonna to talk to you about our capital program. We're funding at a much lower level than originally anticipated. I'll talk about that a little later in the presentation as well. So when we look at our water operations, Two line items that jump out are professional services at a 32% increase and purchase of water at a 10.6% increase. Uh, professional services, that increase is mostly related to ongoing costs of Santa Rosa's share of the Groundwater Sustainability Agency. It's JPA that was set up a few years ago, I believe. And we initially funded that project to pay upfront capital costs to kind of stand up the Groundwater Sustainability Agency but now they're in operational mode. So now we're at a point where we need to shift uh, and budget for yearly operating costs uh, to fund our part of the program. So that's, that's why we're seeing this increase here. In the water purchase budget, um, I'll get into in a little more detail on the next slide. And then we're seeing IT and property insurance uh, as mentioned earlier, or sorry, property insurance rather, 47% increase. So yeah, we're, we're feeling the pain there for sure. So our water purchase budget, as I mentioned earlier, we're only anticipating 1% growth uh, on the volume of water delivered. Uh, Sonoma Water is, is, so we started, Sonoma Water originally proposed a rate of 14.57%. Uh, we did a lot of work with the, the TAC, especially the TAC Finance Subcommittee with Sonoma Water. They were eventually able to come down to 9.88%, which has been approved by the TAC. And um, so we're looking at a total of 15,272 acre feet at $1,289 per acre foot.
Here's a look at our water O&M budgets. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the water purchase is taking up a larger and larger share. Um, the administrative fund and city overhead, that includes items such as water billing um, and internal overhead allocations. In our wastewater operating budget, uh, again, professional services, we're seeing a 10% increase. This is related to costs related to reopening our Geysers Operations Center. And for utilities, we budgeted a 20% increase in the volume of electricity, or sorry, in the rate of electricity used, added a little bit more uh, because we saw that the wastewater sections were actually using a little more budget than, than uh or spending a little more than they were budgeting. So we added a little more to catch up budgetarily in that line item. Here's a visual look at our wastewater o &M budget. Um, about 50% of the budget is administrative fund and city overhead and debt service. Oops, sorry. And debt service, we don't see so much on the water side, but on the wastewater side, the debt service represents the local share of the construction bonds that regionals issued for their major uh, infrastructure replacement projects, such as a UV system. That bond issuance in 2020s all went to plant infrastructure, but some of the older bond issuances, part of that was used on our local sewer infrastructure. And so that's why we're seeing debt service numbers in the, in the wastewater fund. Okay, moving on to the regional operations budget, 14.8% increase in professional services. This is related to the fact that we might not have the ability to apply biosolids um, at, to the same extent for land application as we have in prior years. It's my understanding that several of the ranches or farms that we use for land application uh, have come up with, uh, have new lessees. And we're not sure whether they're going to choose to make their land available for biosolid land applications. So we've budgeted a significant increase in professional services to account for the possible impacts of having to deliver more of our biosolids to list tech. Uh, utilities, again, we budgeted about a 20% increase. And then our IT allocation is going up 24.2%. As a reminder, IT is actually an uncontrollable item. And the reason we're seeing this number go up this year for regional is because they're paying for additional software licenses uh, that they hadn't previously. As we look at the regional budget, this obviously has the largest debt service in the system uh, because it's so infrastructure heavy. We've been doing a lot of work, uh, salaries and benefits, O1M projects and debt service take up almost 50% of the budget. Cash funded CIP, this is the one fund um, out of water, wastewater, and regional. This is the one fund that's fully funding our CIP this year for $11 million. Uh, we increase $1 million per year. We're at 10 million for the current fiscal year. So we are bumping that up to 11. So our regional operations has something called the refund reserve. Um, this is a mechanism we put in place several years ago to help rate smoothing, um, to give our partner agencies the ability to rate smooth. Uh, the regional fund is a zero budget, essentially, meaning we calculate our total expenses, we subtract our anticipated revenues, and we allocate out only the net costs of the partner agencies. So our expenditure should always equal our revenues. Um, what happens is, with each fiscal year, we generate turn back. We either generate a budgetary deficit where we spent more than we budgeted or collected, or we have turn back uh, where we're turning budget back to the fund. Several years ago, the partner agencies said, well, rather than writing us a check back, why don't you guys hold on to the money? We'll put it in a reserve fund. And then say, say we had to propose a 10% increase, Sebastopol might be able to liquidate some of that 500,000 to mitigate that to a net 5% to five increase. So it's been a valuable tool over the years for rate smoothing. Um, we do have some negative balances uh, for ourselves as well as Kotati, uh, but we're hoping to turn that around soon and have everybody on a positive basis. Here's some proposed regional partner allocations uh, for fiscal year 24-25. 
Santa Rosa has a 5% increase. And a look at our operating fund reserves as of June 30th, 2023. Um, I wanted to include this slide to really drive home what's going on with our reserve levels and how we need to address that with the budget. So as of June 30th, 2023, the water fund had an operating reserve of 5.2 million, catastrophic of 5.75, and a 14.8 million undesignated reserve balance. Um, the previous year, that was 21.3. Uh, in wastewater, we had a 1.8 operating reserve, catastrophic of 6.8 and 6.8 and de undesignated, uh, which was 17.1 million in the previous year. And in regional, um, again, we don't have an undesignated fund balance per se, but our partner agency refund reserve uh, did go up a little, uh, which is good to the end of getting everybody out of a deficit position on the reserve balance. And I wanted to do this to outline our prior budgetary approach or our current budgetary approach rather versus what we're doing for next year. So as you all know, we've, we've been building undesignated reserve balances in the water funds for some, for several years. Um, and we wanted to start to accrete some of that. So for 23, 24, we budgeted $54.3 million in revenues and 57.8 in expenses. And we're addressing that going forward uh, for 24 25. We're budgeting revenues of 56.3, expenditures of 55.3, uh, leaving a projected budget surplus of about $942,000. Undesignated fund balance in local wastewater, uh, we budgeted 83.5 in revenues last year, 86.6 in expenses for a deficit budget of $3.1 million. And for 24-25, uh, we're budgeting a surplus of about $890,000. Uh, local wastewater really felt it this year because, as you know, local wastewater reserves pay for Santa Rosa's share of the sub-regional uh, operations and CIP and debt service. And so between covering its own expenses and budgeting for the Santa Rosa's allocation of regional uh, operation CIP and debt service for next year. Uh, it's pretty tight in the local wastewater fund, but we were able to make it work uh, budgeting for an $890,000 deficit for next year. Okay, looking at stormwater and creeks operations. Uh, the first thing I wanted to say, I, I spoke earlier that the 20.5% is a bit misleading. The reason for that is because last year at budget time, there was a project, it's a stormwater permit compliance that wasn't budgeted for at the budget. But what we did was we came in mid-year, provided 100% of the budget for that key. And so the budget system, since it came in as a mid-year revision and wasn't programmed with the budget, it shows a larger delta year over year than there actually is. So most of that's really related to our permits, uh, stormwater permit compliance and work we do for the MPDES permit compliance. And operational supplies uh, are costs associated with stormwater and MPDES permit compliance, along with costs to implement stormwater BMPs at the MSCS Corporation Yard next door. Here's our stormwater and creeks O&M budget. Um, you can see half of their budget is consumed with salaries and benefits uh, for a total of $3.9 million for 24-25. And since we touched on the water operating fund reserves, I'll talk to you about stormwater. As of June 30th, 2023, uh, stormwater enterprise had 744,000, 1672, the stormwater creek restoration fund had an undesignated fund balance of 1.3. Okay, so now we'll move on to talking about some of our CIP funding. I really wanted to highlight this because we had to make some tough choices this year to get the numbers to work. Um, so in order to make sure our expenditures came in under our revenues, which was our top priority for 24-25, we had to make some cuts, and those cuts came in the form of the most discretionary part of our budget, which is the CIP. Uh, we recognize that we're chronically underinvested in CIP, and we're working on that, but um, 
given the fast cost increases, uh, the cost increases over the last several years have outpaced the increases uh, in our rate model. So we, for water, uh, we planned a $15 million CIP and we reduced that by 5.6 million to deliver nine point, a little under 9.5 million. Sewer, we planned 13.9 million. We had to reduce it by 10.6 million. Uh, so we're delivering CIP of 3.3 million. Regional uh, did continue their $1 million per year increase as planned. So that's $11 million for 24-25. And stormwater increase is bringing forth a CIP budget of 1.6 million. So our CIP for the water fund for 24-25 uh, is broken out between master plan studies, miscellaneous, water mains and services, pump stations, and our groundwater program. Local wastewater CIP, uh, 910,000, the sewer mains and services, and $2.3 million in sewer trunk work, and only $100,000 towards master plan studies and miscellaneous. And as you might imagine, um, when you have to pare back your CIP budget to such an extent, master plans uh, and studies tend to fall by the wayside because we're focusing our, focusing our investments on hard infrastructure. Regional CIP, $11 million, 10.1 million in the plant infrastructure and the remaining 900,000 to the geyser system. Stormwater is spending 757,000 in programmatic projects, uh, general maintenance on call for emergency work. If there's spills or contamination, contamination of a creek, um, $150,000 on the McMinn Avenue storm drain replacement and continuing work on the lower Colgan Creek restoration phase three project. So just to touch on the CIP documents in front of you, uh, the spreadsheets are pretty large and busy, but it can pretty well be summed up by saying anything on the gray headers on the left-hand side represents budget that was either previously appropriated or appropriated in the current year. Anything under the colored headers on the right uh, is going to represent proposed uh, one through years one through five CIP budget. Uh, so we always show you five years as a reminder uh, even though we're showing years two through five as a planning tool, we're only ever asking you to formally recommend and adopt year one of the CIP budget. And with that, I'm going to introduce my colleague, Jason Roberts. He's a supervising engineer of our asset management group. Talk about CIP. All right. Thank you, Nick. Good morning, members of the subcommittee. Uh, I'm going to talk about projects that we have proposed for year one uh, in our budget uh, from each enterprise. Um, and so there's a list of them here, but I'll talk about water sewer, water projects, sewer projects, regional projects, and stormwater, just highlighting uh, a few of those. So in our water enterprise, uh, we've got two projects. Uh, we've got the Rock Creek and Matanzas water and sewer main replacement project. Um, this project is replacing aged and undersized water mains uh, installed in the 50s. Uh, the water portion of, of that project costs about $3 million. The project is currently in design and uh, nearing completion of that phase, and we expect to go to construction year one. Um, the next one is Calistoga Road Reconstruction Project. Uh, this is a project driven by Transportation and Public Works. Um, and we are joining this project to replace uh, aged uh, water mains um, in Calistoga Road. Estimated at 1.7 million. Um, design is going to start in year one, and we project construction starting in year two. On our groundwater program, uh, we are restarting work on the Farmers Lane Water Treatment Rehabilitation Project. Um, the project right now is about 90% design. Uh, our consultants are, are regrouping with some changes to scope there, um, but this project's going to replace uh, process and controls and pumping equipment within the facility. Um, construction estimate is about 4.3 million, and uh, we expect to finish design in year one and go to construction in year two. 
Um, another one in our water enterprise um, pump stations. We started a programmatic uh, effort this year to proactively replace uh, our variable frequency drives at our pump stations. Um, they have a, a lifespan of 10 to 15 years. Um, and once they go out, they're out. And sometimes the long lead times on these uh, electric equipment um, can be problematic, right? So we're trying to do uh, have a more programmatic approach to replacing these BFDs every 10 to 15 years. Uh, so we have a first round of replacements scheduled to go to design in year one, and then hopefully construction starting year one going into year two. On the sewer enterprise, um, again, you'll see Rock Creek and Matanzas. A sewer portion of this project uh, is going to replace um, asbestos cement. And it's estimated to cost about a million dollars. Like I said, we'll finish design in year one and project to go to construction in year two. Um, the Fulton Road Sewer Main Improvements Project. Um, that is replacing an eight inch sewer main uh, in Fulton Road, estimated at $2.7 million. The design is complete. There's been an extended portion of design um, near the end uh, due to some negotiations with uh, tribal entities, namely Grayton, but we finished that up and are, are ready to go to construction in year one. Um, Oakmont treatment plant sewer trunk relocation. Now uh, this project's gonna relocate uh, the sewer trunk around the current uh, Oakmont treatment plant facility, which is uh, decommissioned, not being used at this point. Um, and we'll also be doing a new creek crossing um, on the west side of that treatment plant property. Um, this project's estimated 2.3 million. Um, the design is nearing completion and we expect to go to, to construction in year one. Sewer so trunks. Um, you have seen this project come to uh, BPU for contract approval already. Um, so this project is currently in design and we are uh, looking at going into construction year one. This is the design build project for um, a long stretch of Lana Trunk from about Todd Road down to the treatment plant. For Laguna treatment plants, um, there's a major electrical infrastructure improvement project that is getting started. Um, it's currently in design. Um, we are proposing, or we are funding this project with $8 million in year one, mostly for pre-procurement of uh, electrical equipment. Right now, some of the lead times on, on electrical equipment that's needed for this project are about two to three years. Um, so to avoid increases in costs, uh, you know, two to three years out, we're, we're looking to do some pre-procurement. And there's a list of some projects or some components uh, being replaced with this project. Um, the Reclamation Pump Station E building upgrades important projects uh, for not just Reclamation, but the geyser system as well. Um, the current building has exceeded its useful life and um, it needs to be replaced. Uh, there's also an existing gravel floor for this building. And so uh, we'll obviously be replacing the, the foundation and floor with concrete and constructing a new building. Um, it's estimated about half a million dollars and uh, our estimated completion is by July 2025. For the geyser system, uh, we are budgeting and planning for this geyser's pump station electrical upgrades project. Um, a lot of the pumps and the controls are nearing the end of their useful life and or not supported by the manuf original manufacturer. And so we're looking to replace those components. Um, we have existing funding uh, for current fiscal of about 1.3 million to purchase new VFDs for, for our pumps. Um, and then are budgeting another half a million dollars in 24, 25 um, to purchase new pumps and improve or lock out tag out features of those of that equipment. Our stormwater enterprise, 
Um, we have the Lower Colkin Creek Restoration Phase 3 project. This project will connect phases one and two that were done in 2015 and 2021. Um, restore a 2,500 foot creek flood control channel, uh, plant native riparian trees and shrubs uh, along that length. And I think most importantly, increase the flood capacity from 25 years to 100 years. Um, and then new uh, bicycle and pedestrian pathways uh, and, and a bridge. Um, there's been 5.8 million in grant funding obtained for land acquisition, design and construction. Uh, design is currently underway and we hope to go to construction beginning year one and into year two. With that, I'll hand it back over to Nick to talk about the remaining budget schedule. Okay, here's the remaining budget schedule. Um, as you know, we're going to BPU at the study session uh, on Thursday. We'll be asking for the full board's uh, formal recommendation city council on April 4th. Uh, May 7th and 8th, the city is holding their budget study sessions with uh, eventual budget adoption uh, planned for June 18th. With that, we're happy to take any questions you might have. Um, yeah, it seems pretty straightforward, and I support uh, downsizing, downsizing the CIP to fund all this stuff. Seems to be taking a lot for our repairs, and that's them for more. Um, what is our backlog right now? Uh, our our fund, our it's a backlog. Uh, and that's the uh, the 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 well, there we go. So, the end of the document, the grant total amount of grant total balance uh, represents our carryover for CIP. So confused. I don't know why. Uh, so, oh. So, the projected available, I'm looking now at the, uh, the water CIP. And well, that's showing 41 million is the projected available. Uh, what does that mean? That means there's a grand total of 41 million dollars currently appropriated in water state funds. And just to be so just to be clear, it's um so that is money that's been appropriated. Correct. Not encumbered or anything else by a project, but that is it could be it could be that it has not been yeah, actually. I'm like sorry, encumbrances are not out of the figure. So, so those are appropriated but not encumbered. There's a there's specific encumbrances specifically. There's 41 million on the water side, and then it's uh Forty-three. So it's only the total. So it's going to be eighty million between the two classes of water, local water, local wastewater. And um, does that take into? I mean, that does not take into account next year. It does not. Yeah, it's not. That figure is not inclusive of the year one uh, proposed appropriations on the right hand side. Yeah. That was supposed to be a lot. Okay. And then what's up with bio solids? I was just stressing to hear that the farmers aren't taking the bio solids. Um, I'm going to invite Mike. Right now, um, we have a couple properties where there has been some change 
uh, because uh, folks have passed away, new um, folks are part of the family, and just no decision has been made yet. We're going to continue to apply the files. So, in preparation, we want to make sure that we have a place they can go if we're unable to spread up those properties. So, right now, they're going to Fairfield, or something like that. We are budgeting to take them to the second meeting. Those are my comments. Yeah, I think I, I'll support this. Uh, this budget. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'll support this uh, budget. Yeah, I mean, you're going to move. Okay, yeah. uh, I will second. Okay. Well, oh, okay. we have a fun way to go back. Yeah, any public comment on this uh, thing? Uh, see. Board member, right? There's a nice prompt on the screen for your for your uh, motion, if you'd like. Oh, okay. <laughs> so this is what we uh, recommend by the future. Um, so we have a motion to recommend that the Board of Public Utility, Utilities approve fiscal year 2024 25 water. Local wastewater regional use and stormwater increase and the province operations and maintenance and capital expenditure appropriation requests and other public comments on it. Is that what I'm supposed to do right now? Well, I've lost my spot in the screen. You're good. I'm good. Okay. So now we can have a roll call or vote. Uh, board Member Sierra? Aye. Um, Chair Ray? Aye. And that passes with. Um, we then have to sleep with board member Bartolo Hassan. 